What exactly is holding Starship flights back from success? The answer is the Raptor's reliability. In fact, the Starship's engines in Flight 8 encountered problems that were the main cause of the explosion. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The Raptor engine remains one of the most technically complex components in SpaceX's entire Starship rocket program. During Starship Flight 8, the initial performance of the Raptor engines appeared nominal following stage separation. As the second stage ignited, all six Raptor engines, three vacuum-optimized and three sea-level variants, lit successfully, providing the necessary thrust to continue Starship's ascent. At this phase of the flight, there were no immediate signs of failure. The engine plume appeared stable, with expected shock diamonds visible in the exhaust, indicating normal combustion. Telemetry showed consistent propellant flow and chamber pressure, suggesting that the modifications introduced in this version of Starship did not initially impact engine ignition or early operation. However, despite this strong start, a serious issue developed later in the burn. During Starship Flight 8, onboard camera footage revealed a fire inside the engine skirt near the vacuum Raptor engines. Initially, the engines appeared to be operating normally, but as the burn progressed, a noticeable red glow developed within the skirt, indicating the presence of flames. This fire seemed to originate in close proximity to the vacuum-optimized Raptors, raising concerns about potential leaks or thermal management issues. One particularly concerning observation was the heat buildup on a specific vacuum Raptor located in the 2 o'clock position. The affected engine displayed a visible hot spot, suggesting that it was experiencing excessive thermal stress. This abnormal heating may have been an early indicator of a more serious problem developing within the engine bay. The most likely cause of the fire appears to be a leakage of methane or another propellant, which ignited inside the enclosed space of the engine skirt. Such leaks could stem from damaged plumbing, faulty seals, or structural vibrations affecting fuel lines. If propellant vapor accumulates in an area with high temperatures or exposed ignition sources, it could easily result in an uncontrolled fire. This issue is particularly concerning because it closely resembles the failure seen in Flight 7, suggesting that previous mitigation efforts may not have fully addressed the underlying cause. Immediately after the first engine shut down, the remaining engines also failed, leading to a complete loss of thrust. The sequence of shutdowns suggests that the fire gradually spread and may have damaged critical engine components, disrupting proper combustion and forcing the engines to shut down prematurely. With the Raptors no longer providing controlled thrust, the vehicle quickly lost stability. The Starship began to spin uncontrollably, indicating a loss of thrust vector control. Since the Vacuum Raptors do not have the ability to gimbal, the loss of one or more engines created an unbalanced thrust profile, accelerating the spin. This rapid rotation may have further exacerbated the problem by shifting forces unevenly across the spacecraft, making recovery impossible. Another potential factor in the instability was the sloshing of propellants inside the tanks. As the vehicle spun, the movement of liquid methane and liquid oxygen likely became erratic, temporarily exposing and then covering engine feed lines. This inconsistent propellant flow could have contributed to unstable combustion, further degrading engine performance. Additionally, if large pockets of gas had entered the turbo pumps instead of liquid fuel, it could have caused pressure fluctuations severe enough to damage the engines or trigger an automatic shutdown. Additionally, recent modifications to the vehicle's downcomer plumbing may have introduced new structural dynamics. The V2 Starship features multiple downcomers to improve propellant transfer, but this change could have inadvertently created unwanted harmonics or vibrations within the fuel system. If these vibrations resonated at certain frequencies, they could have stressed fuel lines, induced oscillations in propellant flow, or even contributed to mechanical fatigue in the plumbing. After all, the combination of engine failures, uncontrolled spinning, and potential issues in propellant management led to the loss of the vehicle before it could complete its intended mission objectives. Given this analysis, what improvements will SpaceX pursue to address these issues in future flights? To elevate reliability, SpaceX is poised to pursue a blend of innovative design tweaks and operational enhancements aimed at averting repeat setbacks. A primary focus should be fortifying fire suppression and thermal safeguards. The persistent engine skirt fires, echoing issues from prior missions, signal that existing countermeasures fall short. Upgrading insulation around critical systems, optimizing venting pathways, or deploying active fire suppression technology could effectively neutralize blazes before they wreak havoc on engines and intricate plumbing networks. Another key area ripe for improvement is the engine mounting and protective architecture. 
The vacuum Raptor engines seem especially susceptible to heat accumulation and mechanical strain during operation, bolstering their structural supports or re-engineering shields to better deflect fire and debris could significantly enhance resilience. Additionally, rethinking the materials and configuration of engine parts might limit collateral damage when isolated failures occur. Advancing telemetry and diagnostic capabilities will also prove indispensable for catching issues early. SpaceX already harvests a wealth of data, but amplifying real-time tracking of temperature surges, pressure anomalies, and vibrational shifts could sound the alarm on brewing troubles. Installing extra cameras within the engine compartment and propellant tanks would deliver richer visual insights, empowering engineers to zero in on failure origins with greater precision. Lastly, stabilizing engine performance hinges on tackling fuel sloshing and pressure inconsistencies. The thrust vector control loss in Flight 8 may have stemmed from uneven propellant flow, potentially triggering cavitation or erratic combustion. Integrating tank baffles, refining downcomer structures, or adopting active fluid management strategies could ensure a smoother propellant supply, curbing disruptive oscillations. By confronting these hurdles head-on, SpaceX can elevate Starship's dependability and edge closer to routine orbital success. Lessons gleaned from Flight 8 will undoubtedly shape future iterations, making each version of the spacecraft tougher, smarter, and more adept at conquering the challenges of spaceflight. Besides the core issues of leakage and the Raptor engines, many have also raised concerns about Starship's flight termination system in Flight 8. The final destruction of Starship during Flight 8 raises the question of whether it was caused by the Flight Termination System, FTS, or structural failure due to extreme mechanical stresses. The spacecraft continued transmitting telemetry and visible camera footage even as it spun uncontrollably, suggesting that the FTS had not been activated immediately. However, at around 8 minutes into the flight, Mission Control called out, Flight Termination Saved, which could indicate that the system was either disarmed or had already been triggered. If the FTS was responsible for the final breakup, it would have been activated to prevent the vehicle from veering outside the designated flight corridor. Another possible explanation is that the vehicle suffered a catastrophic structural failure due to excessive spin rates. As Starship lost control, it was observed spinning at approximately 16 revolutions per minute. At that speed, the centrifugal forces acting on the vehicle's structure could have reached around six times Earth's gravity, six Gs, at the tips. These forces may have exceeded the structural limits of the spacecraft, especially in areas weakened by prior heating, engine failures, or propellant system damage. If components such as tank domes or engine mounts failed under this strain, it could have resulted in the rapid disintegration of the vehicle. Adding to the evidence of mechanical failure, ground observers captured images of debris separating from Starship before the final loss of signal. This suggests that parts of the vehicle were already breaking apart before any official termination command was given. The cause of this debris shedding remains unclear, but it could have resulted from thermal damage, aerodynamic stress, or internal explosions due to propellant leaks. Ultimately, whether the vehicle was destroyed by the FTS or broke apart on its own remains an open question. SpaceX engineers will likely analyze telemetry, onboard footage, and debris patterns to determine the exact sequence of events leading to the vehicle's demise. In this context, China, the rival space power, also has strong ambitions for the future of the commercial space industry. China's latest government work report emphasizes the commercial space sector as a key driver of high-tech development, highlighting its potential to transform the nation's space capabilities. China will promote safe and sound development of commercial space, the low-altitude economy, and other emerging industries, Li Qiang, the country's premier, said at China's annual political sessions in Beijing on March 5th. Li stated the goal of developing new quality productive forces in light of local conditions and fostering emerging industries, including commercial space. The term new quality productive forces refers to high-tech, high-efficiency, and high-quality development, including areas such as artificial intelligence, big data, and new materials. The Lunar Farside Sample Return Mission Chang'e 6 was also noted as a major achievement for China from 2024, while applications from the country's Beidou GNSS system were also noted as an emerging industry for growth. Commercial space appeared in the Influential Government Work Report for the first time in 2024. Beijing, Shanghai, and other cities and provinces such as Hainan, Hubei, and Guangdong have since developed action plans to promote the development of commercial space. 
The noting of commercial space in the latest report underlines China's commitment to developing the sector as a part of a drive for innovation-driven development and is reflected in local initiatives serving national goals. The central government often mandates provincial governments in China to pursue specific policies. Xuao Falcao Serra, research fellow at the European Space Policy Institute, ESPI, said, They support companies both through investment but also on the regulatory side, such as land grants, both to align with central directives and to develop their own industrial bases. This brings economic benefits to the region and enhances its political significance within China. A key aspect of China's commercial space strategy is its investment in reusable rocketry, a move aimed at enhancing launch capabilities, reducing costs, and positioning Chinese firms to compete more effectively with industry leaders like SpaceX. This year, state-owned and commercial launch service providers are planning to perform tests and the first orbital flights of a number of potentially reusable rockets. The significance of these developments was underlined by a senior space official on the sidelines of the political sessions in Beijing. After rockets can be recovered and reused, the main changes we'll see are faster launch frequencies and, of course, a noticeable reduction in launch costs, Rong Yi, a rocket designer with the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, KSK, and a member of the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, CPPCC, told China Central Television, CCTV. This shall bring us closer to the reality of large-scale, rapid, and free access to space. From a technological development perspective, the application of recovery technology will drive upgrades and innovation in our capabilities, Rong said. Last year, CASC and commercial firm Landspace conducted 10-kilometer-level launch and landing tests with prototype first stages. CASC performed a much higher altitude test early this year, but the outcome is unknown. Landspace aims for a first orbital launch of the Zhuke 3 in Q3 of this year, while Casca's reusable Long March 12A could also fly for the first time in 2025. Other rockets, such as Space Pioneer's Tianlong 3, are also expected to have first launches. A near disastrous mishap has delayed Tianlong 3's first flight in June 2024, when a first stage undergoing a static fire test broke free of its clamps and climbed into the sky before crashing and exploding. China opened portions of its space sector to private involvement in late 2014. Seeing the emergence of firms engaged in light lift, mostly solid propellant rockets and small satellites, the space for action has grown with policy and other support, resulting in larger, reusable rockets, an under-construction mega-constellation vying for international customers, and a diverse ecosystem of companies and activities, often supported by local initiatives seeking to bring growth and innovation to their areas. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.